Hey, hey, it's Dr. J. I'm in my office today. Welcome. Instead of being in my kitchen um, here, um, I've been having a lot of email questions about some of the application problems in 2.3. So I'm making this special video today um, called Loose Ends. So these are some uh, applications that um, were not clearly demonstrated in the other uh, videos for 2.3, um, in particular population. I know I did some problems with population, um, but I didn't show you how to do a population problem where the initial uh, population is not given. So let's go ahead and just start with an example. I guess we'll call this example one. Uh, the population of a town has been growing uh, steadily since 1983. In 1991, the population, I'm just going to say pop, was 39,200. By uh, 1998, the population, that eight is terrible. Uh, 1998, the population increased to 50. 2,500. So um, what we want to do is, sorry, my screen, I'm running out of space. Um, it's one of the reasons why I like my actual whiteboard, but um, I do have a, a whiteboard behind me here, um, but it doesn't film very well. So um, we're going to keep doing it this way. <laughs> I'm also trying to be a little quieter than I am at home because there's classes next door in the classroom. So um, believe it or not, I, I can be quiet occasionally. Um, so the question is to find a linear model. We're assuming that it's growing linearly. Everything in this section is linear. Uh, and the formula is the same. I, I already gave you this basic form or model. P equals A T plus B. Um, you can use X if you like X, but make sure when you type in the answer, you use the letter that is um, suggested, which is T. Um, and the P is like Y. So this is really just Y equals MX plus B, the classic uh, linear uh, slope intercept form. All right, so notice a couple things about this problem. Uh, we want a linear model that shows um, the population where T is the number of years, I'm just gonna use a number sign or what you guys call a hashtag, as the number of years since 1983. So that's the key right here. And the reason why I'm filming this video today is um, because I've gotten a lot of email questions. I already mentioned that. But on my previous video, I did it where I gave you the population in 1983. So it was a lot easier. Notice it says it's been growing steadily since 1983, but the population's not given in 1983. Okay. So we got to be careful. Uh, let's go ahead and... Um, my board is so small, I'm going to have to erase some of this, but let's go ahead and identify who everybody is. So we're going to wait on this. We'll do this last. All right. First, we're going to find the slope. So we're going to go 1991. Okay. So that's going to be um, how many years after 1983? So that looks like eight years. So T1 is eight. All right, eight years. Remember, everything goes back to 1983. You could use the number 1991 when you're finding the slope. I've, I've seen people do it that way and get the right answer, but it's, it's kind of dangerous because you might be thinking that the T is actually 1981. 
Remember, T is the number of years since 1983. So it has not been 1,991 years. It's, it's only been eight years. All right, so that's our T1. And then this is going to be our P1. So I'm going to write that up here. So I've got a T1 and P1 is going to be 8, comma, uh, 39,200. I know those T's look terrible, look like Z's or something. So T, T1, P1. All right. Um, and then we got our T2. T2 how many years? 1983 to 1998. That looks like 15 years. Yeah, 15 years. All right. If you're born in 1983, then in 1998, you'll turn 15 at some point. And we're just counting whole years, not months or anything like that. Um, and then we got our P2. P2 is going to be uh, 52,500. All right. Um, let me erase this for now, just because it's kind of in the way. Um, I've got my T2 and P2. It's just like my X's and Y's from previous sections. Um, what do we got? 15 years, and the population is 52,500. Okay, I did all of that just so that I can erase the actual question. So we can erase the question. I need the space. Uh, there is a quicker way to erase, but I'm already using my pen here, so I'm just going to keep going. I think there's a way of highlighting everything and just trashing it all at once, but I'm going to do it the old-fashioned way. I mean, I went so far as to buy this pen at Best Buy, so it's got the little eraser head thing, so it's going to be... All right, so where are we? Uh, first, we want to find slope, all right? So first we want to find A, which is the slope, also known as the rate of change. All right, so A is the rise over the run. So the P's are like your Y's. So I'm going to go 52,500 minus 39,200 divided by 15 minus 8. Let's use a... Handy dandy calculator. So 52,000, I probably could do this by mental math, but I don't want to risk it. I don't want to make a silly mistake and have it be stressful. So, so I got 13,300. Um, uh, how about this one? We'll do this one by mental math. 15 minus eight is seven. So 13,300 divided by seven. Ooh, nice. I always like that. I don't have to do any rounding. There are some examples where we, we had to round. Um, this one's nice, comes out to be a whole number. So essentially this means the rate of change is it's increasing, because it's positive, right? By, so the population is increasing by 1900 people, people per year. It's supposed to say per. Yeah, you want to know a quick way to do per? You just go like this slash Shh. people divided by years. Yeah. So notice the people are on top, the years are on the bottom. It's people per year. Um, so 1,900 people every year are moving to this town. All right. Um, so now the problem. The problem is we need B. Right? B is not given. Yeah, so none of these are B. And I get a lot of emails where people are trying to use maybe this number for B or this number for B. B is not given. So I say there's no freebie. Sometimes I give you a freebie. In fact, a lot of the problems um, in this section, the B is free. Um, how do you know whether it's free? Well, a freebie is when the year, 1983, or what's called the initial value, is given in the problem. Well, we don't know. It, it, it didn't say how many people lived in this town in 1983. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to use our model. 
Okay, again, I'm gonna have to erase all of this except the 1900. So we're gonna use our model. We already have the form. Some of the problems, I tell you the recipe. Others, I expect you to know the recipe, but it's the same recipe for all of these problems. It's P equals AT plus B, and this is gonna be our A. Uh, I'm using a lowercase b, so let me be consistent here, lowercase b. All right, so we know the population. Just pick, um, we know it's 1,900 is how much it's increasing by. Pick a number of years since 1983. You can use either the 8 or the 15. I'm going to use the 8 because it's smaller. It's closer to 1983, and then I'm gonna use its corresponding population, 39,200. And then, so now I can find what B is. So even though B is not free, it's pretty cheap. Yeah, it's pretty easy to get. 1,900 people per year times eight years, right? Because again, this is 1991, which is eight years after 83. So that means during those eight years, 15,200 people moved to this town. And now by subtracting the 1,500 from both sides, I'm sorry, I called that 1,500. You know what I meant, right? 15,000. 15,200 people. 15,200. From the 39,200 that are, that are there now, that leaves you with B is, I'm just going to move it over here, 24,000 people. So that's how many people were in the town in 1983. All right, I don't need these values anymore. Um, even though I'm erasing these values, I could have used either one. Now, now that I've done it, I don't need it anymore. But um, if I would have chosen to use the other year, I think it was, what was it, 1998, that would have been 15 years. All right, so I've got my A and we've got my B. You would have gotten the same A and the same B. It, it, it's a linear model, and a linear model is a straight line, or sort of a diagonal increasing line. It's straight, but it's not horizontal. It's going up. Oh, how does it look on the screen? That would be something like... <laughs> there we go. <laughs> it's going up from left to right. Uh, you don't have to draw the graph. Just draw the model, although the graph really wouldn't hurt. I tell you what, if you're making a mistake or if you're getting it wrong, drawing a rough sketch will sort of clarify whether or not you've done it correctly. So I've got 1900 T, don't forget the T, you did all that work, it's like your X, you gotta have it, and then 24,000 people. So there's your model. All right, it's a lowercase T, um, looks kind of like a plus sign, so I like to kind of curve it like a backwards J. That's just the way I write it so it doesn't look like a plus sign. Um, you can do a capital T in your notes, but when you type it in, it requires that you type the lowercase letter T. I would never uh, hold you to that. Um, like, I wouldn't mark it wrong, but the computer might, just because it has an autocorrect thing. Um, so if you have a problem with the letters, let me know, and I'll, I'll be happy to take a look at it and see what I can do for you. Um, the nice thing about this model is it gives you um, a way of predicting, right? We don't just do a model for the sake of getting the points, you know, we, we're, you know, getting it correct. Maybe that that's a motivation. You know, I just want to get the right answer and move on. That's fine if that's all you're trying to do. But I like to actually use my model, right? So let's see what this model does. Now, maybe a part B, uh, predict, and it's pretty accurate. I mean, unless things change, right? Maybe the economy changes, maybe the housing market changes, maybe people stop moving to this town, maybe there's an environmental disaster. Who knows, maybe there's a heat wave, people don't wanna live there anymore, I don't know. Um, but if everything remains the same and continues to increase at the, state, at the steady rate, we can predict the population in uh, 2030. All right, 2030. Now the key to this, again, is going back to 1983. Don't plug 2030 into your model. It's the number of years since 1983. So T is 47 years. 
Again, if you were born in 1983, then that means um, you were 17 in the year 2000, right? 17 in the year 2000. So by the time 2030 comes, 17, 30 gives you 47. If you have to actually subtract them on your calculator, I mean, I think with things like years, um, it's, you know, you, you live in a calendaristic world. I mean, you look at calendars all the time. You know what year you were born. You know how old you are, so you can do it mentally. But, I mean, if you have to, just subtract 2030 minus 1983, and it'll tell you how old you are, uh, 47, or how many years it's been. I was born long before 1983. I was probably in middle school or, yeah, probably middle school, 1983. All right, so we're going to take our 47. We're going to plug it into our model. I'm going to switch back to the white pen. So or this is like old school chalk. I like this. It reminds me of when I was in college. Uh, 1,900 people per year times 47 years plus the original 24,000 people that lived in the town. And while I'm erasing, you can plug that into your calculator and see what you get. 1900, I'm not gonna try to be a show off and multiply that in my head. It's 89,300, so the population is 89,300, plus the original 24,000 people that lived there in 1983. And that is, 113,300 people. Uh, the comma is sometimes helpful um, when you're thinking about the number so that you can read it properly, but I wouldn't risk it. Sometimes when you type commas in a computerized um, result, you know, answer box, the computer misinterprets what the comma means. I don't know. It's worth, It's this is homework, so you could give it a shot. I just leave the comma out. I mean, I use commas sometimes to emphasize something, but it's not necessary in the final answer. Sometimes the computer might interpret it as you're giving two separate answers, you know, 113, comma, 300, and a lot of the coding in this um, uh, application that we use to submit our homework um, interprets the comma as separating two, two different numbers. So I would just avoid the comma. So it's 113,300 people in the future. Okay. All right, well, I wanted to keep this quick. Um, I'm in my office hours on Zoom. Um, so come see me on Zoom if you have any questions. Uh, I'll get this uploaded to YouTube um, and you can um, hopefully have a better shot at getting this homework problem correct. Um, until we meet again, this is Dr. Jordan. I'll see you on the internet.